Chapter 13, Dangerous Liaisons. Now that you have Vic's body pressed against your... This mouth hot and hungry against yours, you lose all sense of your surroundings. I've been dreaming of this for so long. Of what? Trapping me in your house and ruthlessly kissing me? Uh, maybe you haven't noticed, but you're the one doing most of the kissing. You clasp his face with your hands, dragging his lips to yours again until you're both breathless and panning. Don't you think we're going on uh, a little fast? Vic, you're free to stop me. You slide your leg between his and nip playfully at his lip. You say the word and I'll let you go. His hands drop down to your hips, his fingers pressing hot imprints in the sides of your ass. Nice try, hot shot. He kisses his way down the sides of your throat, his mouth a soft whisper that sets your heart fluttering. Mm-hmm. You sigh and arch your neck, melting under his gentle touch until he takes the lobe of your ear between his teeth and tugs at him. Vic. Don't look so surprised. You did this to yourself. Sauntering around town like an entitled princess. He drags your hips towards his, the sweet impact sending a shock of heat up your spine. Trying to get the better of me at every turn. He nips his weight on your body, his teeth scraping the upper swells of your breasts through your clothing. Looking so goddamn gorgeous I can barely breathe. You place a hand in the center of his chest and push him against the wall. He hits it with a soft thump. I don't want to hear one more word out of you. <laughs> oh, and what are you going to do stop me? You grin as you lightly score a line of down the side of his throat with one fingernail. He groans with low satisfaction. It's not punishment if I like it. Your breath catches in your throat and you pause, realizing that you've reached the point of no return. I'm here with Vic. He wants me. He needs me. Damn it, Diamond. You're going to try and rile me up again, aren't you? Again. I don't know what you're talking about. I've been nothing but an innocent bystander this whole time. I hardly call your tactics during the charity auction innocent. You found any chance to dance near me with that smoking hot body of yours. You knew exactly what you were doing. I was having a good time. Mm, calling me while wearing nothing but a bikini, knowing how bad I wanted to rip it off of you. You're the one who walks around all sexy and brooding and dangerous. And you're the one who brings it out on me on purpose. You kiss him intensely and unable to resist, you reach for the hem of his shirt, pushing it up his perfectly toned stomach. The hard lines of his abs ripple under your touch. You gasp as you trace his rigid outline lower and lower. You have no idea how much I love you. How much I've always loved you. Man, it's a good thing. I love you too. You're not the only one who fell hard that day at the boardwalk. He presses soft, slow kisses on your lips. You sign into his mouth, your whole body melting into him. I've been waiting to hear that for so long. Your whole body throbs with the need to feel him closer, to feel every inch of his hot skin against yours. He pulls himself away with effort. His breath comes in short, panning bursts. I want you, Diamond, more than I've ever wanted anything. Me too. I mean, it, the things that you do to me, I, I want to devour every inch of you. I want to make you mine. There's no mistake the note in his voice or the way he's looking at you right now. His gaze is as hungry as the rest of him. Take me, Vic! So pretty much you know how this would go, we'd end up doing things that basically we'd have to censor because it's YouTube. I apologize to each and every one of you, but in fact there's nothing we can actually do. There's no need to rush things back. It's easy for you to say, you're not the one standing in front of the hottest woman in the world. You call your arms around his neck and pull him close, this time your kiss is full of promise and heat. I'm not going anywhere, now that I have you I intend to keep you. I guess I can live with that. He takes your hand, drawing you gently towards the bedroom. I'll behave, I promise. Just lie with me for a while. That sounds perfect. He lies on back on the top of the covers and curls up beside him, resting your head on his chest. You close your eyes, feeling Vic's arms are wrapped around you, listening to the soothing whisper of his breathing. 
I was right. It is. There's one. Perfect. It's always nice to just lay there with someone. Be gentle. Be soft. You don't always have to bounce chicka wow wow, you know? Romance. Some of us still enjoy it. You find yourself standing on the boardwalk where you and Vic first met. Everything is warm, glowing, exactly like you remember. Well, lucky for you, I happen to like dangerous. You feel your heart flutter as Vic leans down and touches his lips to yours. Everything about this moment feels perfect and right. You wish you could stay inside it forever. When can I see you again? Tomorrow. I'll meet you right here at noon. Promise. You open your mouth to reply, but find that you can't make a sound. What's wrong? Don't you want to see me again? Panic grips you by the throat. You try to speak, cry about, but all that comes out is a lips, is rhythmic burst of gunfire. No. Gunshots flash all around you like fireworks display gone wrong. Everything, everywhere you turn, there's blood bubbling out through the cracks of the boardwalk. When you look again, you see the older Vic watching you through cold, dead eyes. You took my father from me. Vic, no, I wasn't... He pulls out a handgun, pressing the cold ring of steel over your heart. You took everything from me. You're nothing but a liar, a murderer, and now I'm gonna make you pay. Vic, you wouldn't. You'd never hurt me, Vic. We're in love. He releases a low, bitter laugh that sends a chill up your spine. I could never love a wolf. The click of the safety echoes through the air. Vic looks you dead in the eyes and pulls the trigger. You jolt straight up out of bed, your heart pounding as fast as it feels like you just ran a marathon. No! You force yourself to breathe deeply. Vic is spread out on the bed next to you, his chest rising and falling in a gentle pattern of sleep. It was a dream. Only a dream. It wasn't real. A thrill of terror. No one's ever called it a thrill, but sure. Trembles in your limbs as flashes of the nightmare come rushing back, but you push the feeling aside. You lie back on the bed and try to sleep again. Vic is so warm and soft next to you, even if your blood is still running cold. The next day, dawn's bright and clear, the memories of the nightmare fading away as you and Vic leave the safe house in search of breakfast. Where are we, anyway? Port Weston. It's about an hour outside of New Athens. It's so cute. How have I never heard of it? Because nothing ever happens here. It's too small to be of any use for either of our families. We're safe. Safety is an illusion. You can't help but smile at Vic's naive optimism. What's that look for? My poor, innocent Vic. For people like us, there's no such thing as safe. Maybe not, but this is the closest we're gonna get. Now come on. You haven't lived until you tried the chocolate croissants at this place. He steers you towards a coffee shop at the end of the street. As you walk, you pass by a boutique with a gorgeous set of lingerie on display. I guess this town isn't as sleepy and quaint as it looks. That's some killer look. Hmm, I bet you look even hotter on you. His hand trails down towards your ass. He lightly traces the shape of your panties, cupping your curves beneath your clothing. I'd love to see you wearing that and spread out on my bed or climbing on top of me. Vic! What? I know you've got a gorgeous body hiding under all that clothing. That's all I can think about. Diamond choice. Don't get me wrong. It actually does look good. But I digress. Then you brought this next part on yourself. Grab his hand and lead him inside the shop. Welcome to Dreaming in Lace. Is there anything I can help you to find today? Yes, please. I'd like to try on the laundry set in the window. And before I buy it, I want to make sure it satisfies. Of course. Let me grab it in your size. Why do I get the feeling you're toying with me? You're the one who wanted to see that uh, on my body. So maybe in the future you'll be careful what you wish for. 
You toss him a mischievous grin as you step in the changing room. It only takes a few minutes to shed your clothing and slip into the outfit. Hmm, I'm not sure. I think I need a second opinion. You poke your head out of the curtain. Hey Vic, could you give me your thoughts? He steps into the changing room with you the moment he catches sight of the lace and silk hugging your curves. He stops dead. Holy crap, Diamond. You want my thoughts. You turn saucily around, your body bending and stretching as you show off every angle. I want to know how this makes you feel. I'm going to need very specific feedback. His throat works heavily up and down. He doesn't even look away for so much as a second. You are, without a doubt, the hottest piece of ass I've ever seen. Mm. What a great thing to say to a woman, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Go on. It's taking every ounce of self-control I have not to rip that off of you with my teeth. You place a hand in the center of his chest and push him into the room's chair. He falls with a heavy thud. One more thing. Let's make sure this fabric knows how to move. You place your hands on the arms of the chair and begin slowly grinding your ass on his lap. You can feel the heat rising off of him as he struggles to hold himself in check. What do you think? Does it move enough for you? Mm, if you cared about me at all, you wouldn't ask me that right now. All I want is to touch you. You can touch. But only yourself. I don't mind if you need to take a minute to yourself. I can wait. He tips his head back with a groan. You can tell that it's taking all of his self-control not to slide a hand anywhere. I'm not an animal. I can control myself. For now. A bright, cheerful voice outside the changing room interrupts before you can take things any further. Well, what do we think? Oh, we like it. We like it a lot. Hmm, and we'll be wearing it out. We will, huh? He takes advantage of your momentary surprise to leap up out of the chair. Before adjusting his clothing, he slides out from behind the curtain. I'll pay for this while the lady gets dressed. You don't have to do that. Believe me, Diamond, it's my pleasure. Mm, is he gonna give me my diamonds back then? <laughs> I'm just saying. And yours. You and Vic finally reach the coffee shop. You snag a seat in the back while he grabs you and both coffees and an assortment of pastries. Croissants, apple fritters, danishes. Someone must be hungry. Mm, what can I say? Being with you gives me an appetite. He takes a bite of the danish before carefully licking his lips. You laugh and reach for the croissant, feeling more at ease than you have in a long time. I hope you didn't make my coffee too strong. Otherwise, you're going to have put, uh, have to put up with jittery diamond. Doesn't coffee make everyone jittery? Bro. Bro. Come on, no. Stop that. What is a jitter? I haven't felt one since I was a teen, man. I'm serious. Like, it's been so long. I drink coffee every day. What's a, t what's a jitter anymore? Can someone explain to me? I forget the feeling. <laughs> Not everyone. You should see how much my mole at the mayor's office can drink. I think she might have coffee in her veins instead of blood. You mean Jasmine? Yeah, she's a force of nature. How do you know about Jasmine? Uh, you must have mentioned her in passing. You better start talking now if you have any if you do anything to hurt her, so help me. Whoa, hotshot, it's not what you think, I swear. You I'm surprised you didn't catch on earlier. Jasmine and I go way back. Wait, is she you're secretly your mole too? No, you know the phone call the deputy mayor got at the last minute? The one that caused him to miss your meeting? That was me. I knew he wasn't going to be of any use to you, and then he'd send Jasmine in his place. Why would you do that? I figured I owed you one for getting you in trouble with your mom. And also, I figured uh, with your charms, you'd be able to flip Jasmine like a pancake. That might be the sweetest thing a guy has ever done for me. Yeah, well... He looks down sheepishly. I knew you wouldn't accept a real gift from me. And what do you call this buffet of carbs and calories? 
He rips off a corner of a Danish and pops it in your mouth, fingertips brushing against your lips. I call it breakfast. You sit back and toy with the lid of your coffee, a bubble of warmth swelling in your chest. What is it? Why are you looking at me like that? This just feels so surreal. I can't believe this is really happening. You, me, everyday chit-chat. I know what you mean. Feels weird to just sit here. No mission, no orders, no boss to report to. Can you imagine what it must be like to live your own life on your own terms? Yeah, but you'll always have a boss. You also have to pay your taxes. <laughs> it will never end. The insanity. You mean sitting in a stuffy office and dealing with annoying co-workers? Mm, or struggling to decide what to make for dinner? Vic shakes his head, a rueful grin on his face. Mm, as nice as that sounds, I don't think I'm cut out for that kind of life. I don't know. It might not be so bad. As long as I'm living it with the right person. You cast him a coy look across the table, your toe nudging his. Maybe you could be something respectable, like an accountant. You look pretty cute with a calculator in your pocket. Not really a desk guy, but thanks. You don't want to imagine it with me? Not even a little? Ah. It's a diamond choice, of course it is, to imagine a normal life. I mean, I guess I could... It couldn't hurt to play a little make-believe. This foot pushes meaningfully against yours. You start in this magic and old normal world of ours. How do we mean? You sit back and close your eyes, allowing a dreamy smile to play on your lips. We meet that day at the boardwalk. You and a young Vic walk hand in hand down the boardwalk. You carry a cone of cotton candy, your lips sweet with the spun sugar. You missed a spot right there. He swoops down and kisses the side of your mouth, his tongue flicking away the sweet taste. Hey, we just met, remember? It's not my fault. When you know, you know, and I know. I don't like where this is headed. I bet we have taken things so slow from there. Not a chance. I've added you eating out of the palm of my hand without a, within a week. You try to rush me, but I've always been a stickler for romance. That's not what the tattoos and badass scars say. How does that even collate? God, that was a reach. He shakes his head, determined not to let you win. Nope. It would have all been quiet walks on the beach, stolen kisses in the moonlight. I'd have been a perfect gentleman. Until I showed up for our third date in a short skirt, then I'd take you dancing. Bix sweeps you into his embrace. Lights are low, music soft as the bodies glide against his. We'd waltz together in a grand ballroom. And it... I feel like your body was meant to be in my arms. No way. I'd drag you to a hot club where the lights were low and you couldn't keep your hands off me. You take Vic by the hand and pull him onto the dance floor. Your ass grinding hard against him. His hands fall to your hips with a groan. All that skin showing me already so hot for you. Vic flushes a grin that makes your heart stutter in your chest. Why are you so determined to get me in bed? What's your hurry? I want to get to the good stuff. Dating's boring. Girl meets guy. Guy woos girl. It's a tale as old as time. Oh my god, it doesn't matter. <sighs> you know what, I'm not I'm not gonna ruin it. I'm just, I'll, I'll say some shit at the end of the video. If that's what you think dating is, then you've been doing it wrong. When I take a woman out, I make sure she's a good, she has a good time. Every time. Big plays with your, grabs your hand and starts playing with your fingers. He stops when he gets to the third finger of your left hand. After about three months, I'd say, I'd ask you to marry me. Three months. Mm, fine, six. How about three years? Two. That's my final offer. I'm not waiting any longer than that. 
in the area of your eyes, and I mean sharp appraisal. He looks like he's playing the game, just uh, has a gleam in his smile you can't quite trust. What makes you so sure I'd say yeah? You'd say yes. I have no doubt about that. He lifts his hand, your hand to his lips, and drops a suave kiss on your palm. Marrying Vic is the last thing you'd ever imagined, and yet... Will you marry me, Diamond? At least for a pretend. Only if we get married on the beach. You and Vic stand together on the glistening sands of Turquiza, the sound of the ocean laving at the shores, all the music you need. You're always at their most beautiful under the sparkling sun, wife. And you're always at your best when I have you to myself, husband. We could get married in a mud pit, if that's what you want. The wedding night is what I really care about. You try to snatch your hand back, but it's too late. He holds on to you firm. Well, since you called all the shots for the wedding, the night is mine and mine alone. Vic. He slides his mouth down around your ring finger, his tongue lightly grazing your skin. You watch him transfixed. Once I have my ring on this finger, you're mine to do with what I want. For as long as I want. A shiver moves up and down your spine at the prospect of a lifetime by Vic's side. And in his bed. What happens after the knot is tied? We'll need a house. Something big and stately. You and Vic stand at the threshold of an oversized extravagant mansion like something out of an architectural magazine. It should be big enough to hold my love for you, don't you think? Or, what if we lived deep in a cabin in the woods? You and Vic snuggle up in front of a roaring fire. You're the only two people for miles and miles. We only need the two of us to be happy. You're just saying that because we you want to watch me chop wood without a shirt on. That's an added perk. I think that settles all the important questions, don't you? Almost there. You're forgetting one very important thing, our kids. Kids? How many? I think we should have six or seven. The more, the merrier. Seven. How about we start with one or two, and I get to name them. Mm, really? What are you going to name them? Faith. Faith, the girl who threatened to lock me in her basement and wear my eyeballs as earrings. Yep, she'd be an excellent aunt. And, of course, there's... Hector. Hector. After my dad? Yeah. Is that okay? Takes a deep breath, pushing something down, but then he smiles. Yeah. You'd like that a lot. Fine, just two kids, but only if you promise they'll take after you. Mom, guess what? I kicked a boy's butt so hard at soccer practice today. And I shot a bullseye in target practice. I'm going to be a sharpshooter someday. You laugh and shake your head in protest. I think we'd better all be be better off if they took after you. Mom, guess what? I rode my bike so fast that I caught air for a whole ten seconds. And I helped save a baby bird who fell out of a tree. He let me hold him in my hands and everything. How about a combo? <laughs> Seriously. Your daydreams are interrupted as the door bangs open and a crowd of teenagers loudly enter the coffee shop. The timing is impeccable. There's no telling where things might have gone from there. We'd better get back to the safe house before we're spotted. He nods and places a hand on the small of your back as he guides you out of the shop. Something about his mood feels suddenly sad. Shame. I kind of like that life we were building together. Anything's possible. You never know what tomorrow will bring. Later that night, a storm rolls in while you and Vic are cuddled up in bed. I'm sorry about what I said about your dad and Nadia. I was scared and upset, but it was no excuse. You weren't wrong, though. She knows, I know, but we don't talk about it. I'd like to think she'd, she'd still like me if she hadn't lost him, but I don't know. How did you find out? I heard you arguing with Dylan. So many people have been awful to you, including me. 
Diamond, it's really okay. The day on the pier made it worth it. Today makes it worth it. You aren't sure if you can accept his forgiveness, but you tell yourself you'll try. It's weird to think how different our lives might have turned out if we, you know, met up on the boardwalk the way we'd planned. I try not to think too much about that day. I love the rain, or sound of rain. Mm. So peaceful. I'm sorry. If you thought I ghosted you. Once I found out what happened to Clyde, I, I kind of lost it. You find a shiver and burrow and arm Vic's warm embrace. And it wouldn't have mattered anyway. My parents swept me out of town so fast that I didn't even get time to leave you a message. Yeah. That day was a mess for me, too. You slide your legs until they're tangled with his. Yeah, about that. I um, may have watched a video you had on your laptop yesterday. You what? You're the one who left it alone in there, or me alone in there. I was practically calling my name. I'm sorry. The detective was out of line. That was bad, even for a cop. Only an asshole would treat a kid like that even after you've lost your dad. His arms tighten reflexively around you. He holds on to you as if you're... he never plans to let you go. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It's all in the past now. You reach up and trace the scar that lines his face, memories of the police record. You and Faith, red, still linger in your mind. That's when you got this, wasn't it? You took your motorcycle out after I didn't show? You know about that? I found out when I was snooping around. A wolf does her research, and you've been through taking up a lot of my thoughts lately. No, this... The scar came out. It came later. A wave of sadness overtakes you, but all you do is stretch up and kiss the edges of it. If it helps, it's kind of hot. <laughs> if you like it, then it was worth every painful stitch. For what it's worth, I'm sorry. Don't be. Neither of us got to choose what happened that day. Some pulse of anger seems to overtake him. Just like I never got to choose all the things that have happened to me since. Mick. All that matters is that we're together. We're together, and we're in love, and that's the only thing I care about. You get the feeling Vic doesn't fully believe you, that he pulls you into his chest with his arms around you, and you drift to sleep. We're driving in a car. The next morning, you and Vic have no choice but to return to New Athens and face reality. I wish we could stay, but the longer we're gone, the more questions our families are going to ask. You try to reach over the console to take Vic's hand, but he does nothing to return the gesture. Please don't go back to blowing hot and cold again. Didn't you kind of do the same? Hot kettle, kettle pot. Vic doesn't even look over at you as he parks the car a few blocks from your house. Will you be okay to get back from here? I'll only be okay when we can stop hiding. I don't like lying to my parents, and I don't like the idea of you lying to Nadia. A soft smile touches his lips before disappearing just as quickly. Don't worry about me, Diamond. I can handle myself. When will I see you again? I don't know. Just be safe, okay? I always am. You slip out of the car and up your family's driveway. The moment you set a wolf on the set foot on the wolf property, you're surrounded. She's here, she's back. It's about damn time. Out of everyone, Roy looks most relieved to see you. You remember giving him the slip back at the beach and your stomach twists with guilt. I'm sorry, Roy, I didn't mean to worry you. There wasn't there just wasn't time. Save your breath, kid. I'd be tearing you a new one right now, but you're about to get more than enough of that from... Where the hell have you been, young lady? You flinch at the sight of your parents storming out of the house, pure fury in their eyes. All oh, the selfish, stupid things to do. After the bombing! 
I'm sorry. I lost my phone at the docks, or else I would have called to let you know I was okay. You understand, don't you, Dad? But he's got that look. That quiet, seething, searing rage. A rage you never thought would be turned on you. No, Diamond, I don't understand. We're at war. I needed you here. I know, and I'm here. Just tell me what we're going to do. I'm here to help. We're ending this. We're going to kill every single flint. Starting with Nadia's beloved sons. Oh, shit. Well, without further ado, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Head down the description. Plenty of cool links and things to check out there. And let's go. So, um, oh, a couple of the choices were really bad in this. Um, unfortunately, due to an error, I had to restart the chapter, but I had chosen a couple of the other choices that I didn't choose in this one. Like, you know, the other choice when sitting in the coffee shop and pretty much, um, you know, it was her pretty much like wanting to push him, right? See where he would go, push him past his limits and things like that. And she made the comment about wanting to break him. And it just didn't sit right with me, right? Especially, like, if that's the mentality for that choice. And there is, unfortunately, a lot of people out there who want to see people broken. And they like manipulating, they like controlling, and they like doing things bad. Secondly, um, I'm a romantic, man. I, I, like, I, I just enjoy treating a woman right. It's not all about that male chick. Well, well, there's a reason why I still have my V-card, and I am proud of that. Because I am waiting for Mrs. Wright. I haven't found her yet. I haven't uh, really found much of anyone lately. Um, because, you know, as I say, you know, there, there's people out there who just don't want to be a part of your life when you're going through some times. And, you know, each and every one of those people uh, I'm going to remember. Each and every single one of you um, that, that has been in my life, that has supported me, that has been there with me. I will remember you. But I also remember the other people, too. Um, I never forget anything. And I will definitely not forget those people. And, um, yeah. So, you know, it is what it is, right? And, um, you know, it's nice to, it's nice to think about what ifs, right? It's nice to think about romance. It's nice to think about enjoying life. And, like I said, not everything's about bounce chicka wow wow You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, uh sweet gentle things right like you can get around to that later right but you literally and figuratively can't do it in 23 hours a day no one can right like literally and figuratively like i get it there's moments where you're hot and heavy in the whole nine yards i get that right that's human nature you know that will never leave that is in a cage for me but uh long story short is, is is there's a time and a place for that but yeah, again it ain't 23 hours a day you know no one can do that or you're gonna run yourself ragged and dry and then it's all gonna be gone and then what's there to your relationship not a damn thing so yeah that's my feelings on it without further ado thank you all for watching love your beautiful faces hopefully you all did enjoy um let me know how you felt about the story what i said and whatnot peace